Hello, everyone, and welcome to the session in which we will keep working with the statement of cash flows. In the prior session, we looked at the introduction, operating section. Now we are dealing with the investing section. The investing section is the second section. The investing section deals with long-term assets, such as long-term investments, property, plant, and equipment. So you need to be familiar with depreciation, accumulated depreciation, long-term investments, long-term investments in bonds, long-term investments in stocks. Also, you might have a notes receivable there every once in a while. Again, your knowledge of the balance sheet is important here, specifically the long-term section. Also, under the investing section, sometimes you might buy something using a loan. So you need to know that's not a cash flow. You need to differentiate between those. Otherwise, we're going to keep working with the with this section, which is the second section, the investing section. But it should be pretty straightforward as long as you have a good understanding specifically of how depreciation and accumulated depreciation work. Because throughout the year, we might sell several assets, buy new assets, making sure we reconcile everything. Don't worry, we'll work an example and we'll work a few examples later until you get it. Stay motivated. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. In the prior session, we looked at the operating activities. So if you are not familiar with the operating activities, which is the first section, please review the prior recording. In this session, we would look at the investing activities. And under investing activities, we're going to have a cash inflow and a cash outflow. I'm going to start with the cash outflow. Investing activities involve investing in yourself. How would the company invest in itself? For example, think of a company like Olive Garden. It's an Italian restaurant. It's a chain. How do they invest in themselves? Well, they want to grow. When they want to grow, they buy a new building. They buy kitchen equipment. They buy furniture for the store. They buy a computer system. All of those are considered property, plant, and equipment. They're investing in themselves. That's one way to invest. Now, when you invest in yourself and you spend money on such items, that's an outflow of cash. You can also, if you have extra money, purchase investment in other companies and other company stocks and other companies bonds. So when you have extra money on hand, what do you do with it? You buy stocks. For example, Olive Garden might buy Apple stock might buy Google, which is Alphabet. They might buy NVIDIA stock. They invest in those companies. Well, they can buy their stocks. They can buy their bonds. This activities goes under investing activities, or they might be lending money. They could be lending money to other companies. That's in investing activities. Those are all outflow of cash under investment. Now, the opposite of these activities are inflow of cash. So at some point, Olive Garden might close one, two, three, four, five stores. And when they close them, they might sell the building. Sale of property, plant, and equipment. They might sell the building, the kitchen equipment. Maybe they have a warehouse. They might want to sell if they're downsizing. They're the opposite of a purchase. So notice the sale is the opposite of a purchase. Sale of investment. Remember, they might have purchased NVIDIA. They might have purchased Apple computers. They might have purchased Google. Well, they can also sell those bonds and sell those stocks. And when they lend money, the opposite of that is when they collect their loan. Those are positive cash. Really, what we're looking at is this. We're looking at two items when it comes to investing activities. Property, plant, and equipment. And long-term investments, investments in stocks and bonds. Now, there is this three-step process to compute the cash flow from 
investing activities. First, you have to identify the changes in investing related account. And as we said, those are PP&E accounts, property, plant, and equipment, and investment account. Explain the changes using T account and restruct restructuring entries. Then report the cash flow effect. And this is what we will do in this session. Look at the previous examples that we started with, which is deals with triple K. Triple K is we are giving the income statement to triple K. We are giving the balance sheet. And notice here under the balance sheet, we're already done with the current asset because we use those accounts to do what to prepare the operating activities here we're going to be focusing on long-term assets we're going to be vo focusing on this section and for liabilities there's not much liabilities unless we are giving additional information and indeed we were giving additional information in this problem item one dealt with the operating activities which is item one is out Item two, Triple K purchased 110,000 in plan asset by issuing 110,000 in notes. So we're gonna be dealing with this item. This is an investing activity. Triple K sold plant asset with a book value of 32,000, original cost of 56, accumulated depreciation of 24. They sold it for 18,000. That's also an investing activity. Triple K received $75,000 in cash from issuing 5,000 new share. That's a financing, so we don't have to deal with this in this session because we're only focusing on the investing section. Triple K paid 81,000 in cash to retire a note. Also, that's a financing when you pay off your note. Triple K declared and pay cash dividend. Again, when you pay dividend, that's a financing activity. So simply put, we have to deal with item two and item three. And let's zoom in on the balance sheet. Again, we're going to be focusing on the asset section, specifically long term. First, we see the difference between the accounts. And if we look at the difference, it reveals an increase of 54,000 in plant asset from 5,210,000 to 5,264,000. So the plant asset increase by 54,000. And accumulated depreciation also increased by 58,000 from 105 to 163. Remember, accumulated depreciation is a contra asset. That's why it's a negative. Now, that's good, but, but we are giving additional information. Now, if that's all we are giving, that's the only thing that's easy. Then plant asset increased by 54,000, but that's not really true. We were giving additional information. So when you are giving additional information, what you have to do is you have to analyze each set of information separately starting with item two in item two we purchased plant asset of 110,000 by issuing a note so we debit an asset plant asset and we credited notes payable well what does that mean this is a non cash investing and financing activity so notice plant asset is an investing activity notes payable is a financing activity so this transaction it's both investing and finance but it's a non-cash investing and finance what do we do with the, with such transaction it doesn't affect the cash flow statement numbers but we're gonna have to do what disclose this so simply put there's no cash effect on this remember in item three we sold plant asset for fifty six thousand I'm sorry, we sold plant asset costing 56,000. So at some point we had a plant asset. It has a T account of 56,000. And now we need to get rid of it. We are going to credit plant asset. That's what we are told. Accumulated depreciation, whoops. Accumulated depreciation with accumulated depreciation of 24. Remember, accumulated depreciation is 20 has a 24,000 to get rid of this you have to debit 24,000 that's why we are going to debit accumulated depreciation of 24 so we got rid of the plant asset we got rid of its accumulated depreciation now we sold the asset for 18,000 we are going to debit cash 18,000 now as a result of this we incurred the loss now how do we know we incurred the loss well if you look at the income statement you are told in this income statement, we looked at this in the prior session, when we look at the income statement, there's a loss on the plant asset of 14,000. You are giving the loss. 
you may not be giving this loss. You might have to figure out whether you have a loss or a gain and how much is the loss or the gain. Well, what do you do under those circumstances? Well, you have to figure out how much you sold the asset for, the cash, the cash equal to 18,000, and the cash equal to 18,000, that's the cash, and the book value of the asset is way more than the cash. The book value equal to the 56,000 minus the 24,000, which is the cost of the asset minus its accumulated depreciation. This is how you compute the book value. You want to make sure you know this. If not, make sure you know this. So the book value is 32,000. Now, this is the book value. The difference between the cash versus the book value of 32. We had an we have an asset for 32,000 on the books. We sold it for 18. The difference is a loss. Therefore, we debit a loss. We're, we restructured this entry, but what's the purpose of it? The purpose of it is simply put, we received cash of 18,000 because all what we care about is the cash amount. The loss was on the income statement and we already accounted for that. Remember, we had to add back the loss because it reduced net income. Well, Let's take a look at this. We would also, we want to re, uh, restructure the depreciation expense, but before we do so, let's take a look at the plant asset. Beginning balance was 5,120,000, ending balance 5,264,000. We sold an asset, we credited this account, and we debited the plant asset 110. So 5,210,000 plus 110,000 minus 56 is indeed 5,264,000. All in all, all what we did is we spent cash of 18,000 and that's all what we care about because we're looking at the statement of cash flows. Now, for the accumulated depreciation, we started with 105, we ended up with 163. Well, we got rid of this asset and we got rid of its related accumulated depreciation of 24. We debited accumulated depreciation 24. And from the income statement, we know that we booked depreciation of 82. This is depreciation went up, depreciation went down. 105 plus 82 minus 24 will give us 163. We accounted for all the depreciation. Therefore, we know that we accounted for everything. And what's everything? We only spent $18,000 on plant asset. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means cash flow from investing activities is a negative, I'm sorry, a positive because we sold 18,000. Yes, we did purchase an asset for 110,000. Remember, how did we purchase this asset? Via a note. Therefore, what we have to do is we have to disclose this information. And basically, this is how we will disclose it. Non-cash investing and financing, plant asset with the issuance of a note. And this is the disclosure for the plant asset and we sold the plant as the other plant asset and we received $18,000 in cash. Now we are ready to do what? Prepare the investing section. And this is the investing section. In the prior session, we looked at the operating section and this is the, so this was the first section. This is the second section, the investing section. And under the investing section, we received $18,000 in cash and it's net cash provided of $18,000. Thousand. What's left is the third section. And what's the third section? The third section is the financing section. And we would look at the financing section. But what should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures and look at additional MCQs, additional resources that's going to help you, whether you are studying for your CPA exam, accounting student, CMA candidate, or taking this for just additional knowledge. Invest in yourself. Farhat Lectures is always here to help. Good luck and stay safe.